And we're back at the Walton Street Club here in Hull in the grounds of the MKM Stadium on what's been a massive day for Hull City with the news that Liam Rossini has lost his job after 18 months in charge. We're about to record a live edition of the 1904 Club podcast with myself, uh, with Burnsy, with David Myler and of course David Prutton. So make sure you hit like and subscribe and the podcast will be out soon. is the Hull Daily Mail, Oops. the Hull Daily Mail writer uh, for Hull City, Baz Cooper. <laughs> and a regular member of the 1904 club, perhaps the best player to come out of Hull, who never played for Hull City. He went on to play Premier League football, he exchanged hands for a few million quid, he achieved a really good standard of football. I think he played for England under 21s 25 times. True. That is true. Yep. And yeah. then fell off a cliff and <laughs> did anything else after that. Uh, and and be, after the footballing career, he's carved out a career as a top notch broadcaster. I'm not sure what the hell he's doing on the 1904 club, but I'm really glad he is. David Prutton, everybody. <laughs> Joining us for the first time, a man who has done, well, lots of things in terms of Hull City. Uh, two promotions, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, joins a very select club of Hull City players to score at Wembley. An equally select club of Hull City players to play in an FA Cup final. I think he played in Europe. He did play in Europe. So it's getting even more select. He selected us tonight. Well, we selected him and gave him a call. And there was obviously nothing on the telly. And he's turned up at a great night, really, because occasionally, I think, a paycheck pops in from the club. So it'll be interesting to see what he has to say tonight. He was a wonderful player for Hull City. You knew he would give everything he got every single game even if he got headbutted by an opposition manager. <laughs> the one and only David Myler joins us on the 1904 club. Some eagerly anticipating Hull City fans. <laughs> Miley, I thought it was going to be a tough gig there. I did worry that they weren't going to cheer or clap. But anyway, a day of history for Hull City, I might suggest a sliding doors moment in the history of Hull City because we don't know where it's going to go. Liam Rossini, promising young manager, is now history at Hull City. Former player, now former manager, as the owner Adjan Illagella decides seventh place in the championship does not meet his ambition. On this edition of the 1904 Club, We'll do the whys, the wherefores, and the where nows of Liam Rossini, the right decision for Old City Football Club. If you think yes, will you put up your hand now, please? For those, there was one man at the bar, but I think he just saw the pint of lager. For, for those listening, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you'll see not a single hand went up. Just to make sure there's not sudden paralysis down Walton Street. If you think this is the wrong decision for Hull City Football Club, please put up your hand. Yes! There you go. A sea of hands. We'll discuss it. That's Cooper. What's what are you up with it? What do you make of it? I think emotionally, and knowing him like I do, I do feel for him. He understands exactly what football is. I mean, you could say it was actually done by Derby as well. Um, and he's not going to be a nearly man in football. He's going to be very, very successful with regards to where he goes next. Hopefully not to the detriment of Hull City and people going, Christ, we should have kept hold of him. But 
the, the, the financial reality of where City kind of flirted with is astronomical. He puts 24 million quid in this season, you get promoted, that's at least 200 back, pretty sharpishly. Um, I said on Monday that I still maintain that City probably are the seventh or eighth best team in the division. That's been borne out by, quite obviously, statistical, the finish where they've, where they've got themselves in the league. Um, so from a hard-headed businessman point of view, to try and put myself in the position of the owner, I can see why he would do that. I absolutely can, because football is all about the here and now, the missed opportunities. Maybe he's looking at it and saying there's a league one side there that's gone and got themselves automatically, automatically promoted. But the intangibles with Ipswich Town is what's got them there. They've got, they've got a very good manager, they've got very good players. But sometimes, without making it sound like witchcraft, there's something magic in the air that gets the team where it possibly deserves to be. Ipswich Town being the case in point. Um, so I think, I was chatting earlier with some very charming gentlemen on the way in about the vast swing in what you see from City. You see Southampton, you see Stoke. Different ends of the spectrum. I'm sure everyone enjoyed Southampton. Everyone was bored to tears with what you saw with Stoke. Um, so maybe he's looking in that thinking there's a swing there that's too big. Whether that's to do with recruitment or motivation the side or the way the side's set up. That's what uh, the owners boiled it down to. I didn't think for one second that <clears throat> Liam Rossini would not be the whole city manager by the time we were doing this. I had a couple of hours with Louis Coyle this afternoon, who was in exactly the same position. He got a slightly earlier heads up being the club captain, but was still answering teammates' questions about why that would be the case. Um, but if you are a player, you are an employee, the boss is the owner, he said he's not going to be leading you forward anymore. We'll wait and see who comes in. You've just got to get on with it as, as players, David. It's, it's as brutal as that. It's the king is dead, long live the king, whoever that possibly may be. It's going to be, it's going to be much missed, Liam, because we've spoken so many times about how amazing this place has felt from top to bottom. But, but that, that comes from the owner, isn't it? The, the owner has generated that. But, but, and people have bought into it, and, and Liam has been part of that. But uh, Liam, again, trying to talk about Liam in an objective way, knowing him like I do, very charming, very very kind of um, PR savvy. Knows exactly what is a good sound bite. Not in a not in a cynical way at all. But he's a tremendously likable man, isn't he? But likability doesn't get you in the Premier League sometimes. And it's shown and been blown out by his own. He's a real dog. I, I love Rosie. Um, I played with him for a few seasons. I'm good if he's lost his job. At the same time, I understand football. As a professional for 14 years, the club are ambitious, the owner's ambitious, he wants to take the club back to the, the Premier League. It's it's par and parcel of football, he's made that decision and I fully respect that decision. Look, I'm got it for Rosie, but look, it's football. Um, and were you surprised when it came when you heard tonight? Yeah, I was. I think by, by me, anyone who wasn't surprised. Okay. Like, Anybody not surprised? Anybody said, well, for the show of hands away, though, yeah. everyone, I'm going to go with everyone who was surprised. Now, to allude to what Baz is talking about, I personally feel Holler better than West Brom. I think they're better than Norwich. Um, Leeds is a bit of a toss up. I think we're better than Southampton. It's just, like, Prutz touched on the, uh, the Stoke game. I was at the Stoke game and it was just, oh, it was dreadful. Um, but it was just it was just one of those games that nothing was working for us and then we conceded and it's it just felt like a right kick in the teeth and it was, I imagine it'll be a game the managers will look back on um, and think like we could have we, well, we should have gotten some from that. Is that is, is that a fair thing that actually we've lost our momentum and that three really has to be a good thing for us? Momentum's massive. Would you turn even if they start the season at least one well, right? My big thing in the championship. Right, it's all about see what's happening at the start of March. And then it really comes down to the nitty gritty of pushing for either the top two or the playoffs. You have to be in and around it. If you remember back to the year I played in 15, 16, but coming towards Christmas, I believe we won eight championship games in a row. Because we played Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. We never trained, right? Steve Bruce's schedule, we say Wednesday off, train. You do a recovery session on Thursday, light session Friday, play Saturday, off Sunday, light training Monday, play Tuesday. But we had incredible momentum. It was around the time, if you remember, we beat Middlesbrough 3-0, Burnley 
we were just standing in the tunnel and there's no way they're going to beat us. And we had that. And I, and I do feel like in, in the championship, if, if you get on good momentum and everything's going well, it just kind of rolls, one game rolls into the next game and the next game. Likewise, if you're losing, it can also have that effect. Winning is a habit of swords losing, and all of a sudden, two, three, bad. Is that part of the problem? They were very streaky, that they could never go four, five, six wins together, which is difficult in the championship. Yeah. But other teams above them were perhaps able to do that. It's funny, David, saying that because I remember watching that side of the world. And if you look at historically the city sides that have climbed up into the Premier League, they've been tough teams. This one is, I can play football in a wonderful way. It's super nice, though. I think you can bully them. Yeah. I think you can absolutely play in a way that would frustrate. And we've said it before you can have as much of the ball as you want. The Leeds game, for example, <coughs> loads of the ball, sod all with it. And that's sometimes your games, but that and sometimes your games where it's a bit more effective. Um, I don't think, and this is, I mean, to say a team's not nasty enough, it's a bit, maybe it's a bit of a cheap shot. But th that that kind of cutting edge, the, the less the cutting edge has been, the best squad. The Ipswich cutting, cutting edge of, we're not getting in the Premier League as individuals, we're getting there as a team to see them over the line. The, the playoffs now, Christ, you've got teams that have just kind of staggered the way into it. I'm, I'm intrigued to see how that pans out. And what the owners are probably seeing is, it's it's the it's the comparison being the thief, thief of joy, isn't it? You're going, shit, we were so we were so close to it, of if that's the first one where they go. Um so close to it, but to be that close, you might as well be 10, 12, 13, because it's it's the frustration that comes with what's it. Especially when you sit back and probably watch these games now over the course of the weekend, Norwich Leeds on Sunday followed by and so Anton West Brom. Live on Sky Sports. Are you presenting any like that? Sadly, I am, yeah. And if you want to watch Doncaster on Friday, you can send things back. Live on Sky Sports. You can get a nail pass if you want. You can try the, the non show of hands and bend the show of hands. Why do you think it's the wrong decision for the whole city football club? I think there's something to build on at Hull City, and I think we were we're the almost club. What if. What if next season we've got to say Christmas and we're, we're up there with Liam, does he keep his job? Or we look at Christmas and think, okay, we're not quite making it, let's make a change now. I, I think a lot of us are in shock, we don't know what to say, really. Okay, thank you for having a go at it, Adam. There's a gentleman up in the, in the far corner, the question's the audience, it's the right decision. Uh, and, and that's a tough one to answer, I accept that. Well, it is, and it only gets kind of contextualised, I should know it's a big fight, just make it into um, yeah. And it only gets contextualised. Not on Sky Sports on Friday night. She's just kicked out of his tops. Go forward. Yeah, don't swear. Um, uh, without, if, without dodging what the actual answer to that question is, only time will tell with regards to who comes in next. But when you talk about ownership and um, kind of question marks about potentially where a team could be, I remember speaking to Paul Henry Bottom when they went up um, the season got Sheffield United, and as Sheffield United hit the top of the table, doing one well in the FA Cup, he had a conversation with the owner which was along the lines of, I think, going to make a change. So to, to try and put sense to what sounds or feels a little bit nonsensical is really, really tough because. Historically, managers can change. Neil Atkins gets picked from Southampton. This is this fellow called Pochettino comes in, and he does all right with them, doesn't he? Um, so this will only get deemed a good or a bad decision by who comes in next. Now, I don't know whether Baz knows names or potentials in the frame. One that I'm seeing on Twitter was Steve Cooper. Steve Cooper has got a team on the championship. For the benefit of those listening to the podcast, Baz, please explain your head movement. No, it's not Steve Cooper. Um, I'll you know. Because you know who it is. I may have spoken to the owner. Um, All right, so what did you, you may have spoken to that's yes, you talked to the owner without, without giving anything away. Does he have somebody in mind? Or, if you've got a name, name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, There'll be so many football clubs going, we'll give, give him half a chance here. And he'll, he'll do something great. I don't think it's all smoke and mirrors. Knowing the man like I do, seeing what his teams can do, his conviction to his, his vocation that he's chosen, 
coming away from a very cushy job in what he was doing, sat talking to us. Um, he could have been there for the next 20 years. Amenable, personable, looks great. All the things that you would want in, in someone that would be talking about football. Elected to jump over the edge and, and give, it a, give it a go. So somebody will pick him up and somebody will do very, very well off the back of that. Ajahn's conviction in his, in his decision making has got to see him through that. And I presume a man that's possibly made as much money as he has cares about certain things but doesn't give a shit about other stuff. You know what I mean? This is my club. I'll make the decision. You can judge me further down the line. And that's what that's what will be the case. Oh, there's something that you raised a couple of weeks ago on a pod and I thought it was really interesting. I don't know if you heard, um, we, we talked about the, the players that came in and you referenced uh, uh, Carvalho before Fulham. Um, obviously had a difficult time at, at Liverpool and then Leipzig. Zorori, decent spell at Burnley, but what about before? Little spell. And yeah. the, these players that City signed, so there was an awful lot of expectation in, in, in even in the summer with Liam Delap, all fairly average spells at, at Preston and, and Stoke City. Um, he's been brilliant. We've, I think we've all loved Liam Delap this year, and he's been phenomenal. And I think we all love to see him back in the summer if that deal can be done. Um, maybe the landscape changes slightly now, but a lot of the players they've signed, you, you, you made the point. Well, what about before? So. Mm. Was there, a, was there an over-expectation on the players that were brought in? Did we expect too much because of little tiny bits and pieces? Zorori being a prime example. Yeah, and I think possibly relying on players that have had purple patches and not denigrating any of the careers because, I mean, like, a majority of that, I could not lace the boots. But um, all, all you need is, that, again, it, I'm making it sound like it's some kind of mystical kind of force. All you need is that one perfect season where it all comes together. Anyone heard of Manuel Benson and Anna Sorori before they went into Burnley? Anyone? Not a clue. They were the best, two of the best players in the championship, and then uh, you've not seen them since. So there, there is an element of when players come together, something very, very special happening. And yes, players came in the door, whether they're the right players, time has told that potentially not, because it's not kept Liam in the job. But, but on that, we are told that the club say that they're a great signing for us, they're going to be fantastic for us and everything like that. So we take that at face value. And you've got to say that. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I but, as well. when, uh, but when people when they signed Zorro, everybody was... Well, yeah, yeah, well, 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 did. given his pedigree and everything like that, but we're told these will be fantastic players for him. And it's not worked out. I said a few weeks ago on the pod <coughs> that, for me, um, the whole was less than the sum of the mm. parts as a team. And that's got to reflect on the coach and the coaching staff. Because well, so there's only one person that gets moved on when um, recruitment doesn't meet expectation, and it's got to be the manager. Lee yeah. knows that. Lee, I said, keep going on about what a lovely fellow he is. He'll know. You don't play as long as he did in professional football. He's a lovely fellow. But most footballers that you meet are pretty horrible under the surface because you've got to be to get anywhere near what your career is. So he'll absolutely understand that, and it always falls on that. I mean, maybe it's a broader possibly topic of debate of recruitment. Has, has he always had the final say on who he wants, what he wants? I think there's a mixture there, isn't there? And that is, I guess, you know, you guys have played football. This seems to be the modern way now where you get the manager will, will have an input and you'll get external people will have an input. And I think at City, you know, the, 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 the goalkeeper situation is a prime example. Ryan Orshaw was very much a Liam sign-in. Ivor Pandor was kind of a club sign-in and then obviously hasn't been given the opportunities and then was dumped off the bench in the final few weeks with Matt Ingram coming back from the cold and back onto the bench. That's a statement for you that... Absolutely, it didn't go down well. And I think that is, I think the Pandor thing, you know, not being involved, um, particularly when there was a perception that Ryan Allsop was making mistakes um, and costing points, was, was a problem. And I think that was, was, that's clear friction for me between the own, not just, not just the owner, but the football side of it, as in Liam, and also the board, at board level, I think there was a, a disagreement there. Um, and that is always, that's the modern way now though, isn't it? You've got, you, you know, you look at West Ham, Moyes is not overly happy with the recruitment situation in some respects there, and the guy that they brought in. And this, well, there's this, suggestions that potentially, and it's only a rumour, that that's one of the reasons why Klopp's going, because he doesn't have final say on, on what that structure is. FSG is an entity saying this is how we run things now. And the manager, whoever comes in, as we know, is, is um, the Dutch fella, he's going to have to fit into that. Yeah, I think Doak and Cynic's another example. I think there's a feeling that, um, that Doak and Cynic was a, you know, a player. It was said to me that Vincent Company wanted to sign Doak and Cynic before we signed Anasarori. Uh, we obviously City signed Doak and Cynic, 
last season, I remember being out in Turkey in pre-season, he was at St George's Park going through uh, his own training schedule and not out in Turkey with the first team. And then obviously then they signed Lakilo and Lakilo was picked above Dokin Sinek, head scratching again. So th there's been certain decisions that have um, conflicted within the football club. And that's always going to happen, isn't it? Because you've got, you've got different perspectives, different egos, different agendas. Um, and ultimately, it's met its match because now the manager's uh, gone. I was surprised. I mean, you know, I'm not going to hold my hands up and, um, and say I wasn't surprised. Yeah, I've questioned what he was doing, but I, I think that's fair enough. I do think he's achieved and underachieved at the same time, given the investment that came in in January. And we've been talking about it on, on the pod. Um, but I, 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 wasn't ex I wasn't expecting this. I think he'd done enough for me to, to earn another go. But absolutely take um, Bazzi's uh, logical explanation of why Adjun's done it. If you're going to do it and you've got any doubts, then now's the time to do it because you give the new man a chance to, to build and assemble a squad that's needed to get to the playoffs next season, which I, I take it must be the minimum target. So the new man's going to come under a lot of pressure because we all know that if he doesn't do it and doesn't get them to the playoffs, his backside's skidding down the road. So I wish him well, whoever whoever it might be. If it is somebody coming in from abroad, because they've, they've sacked most of the backup stuff, staff, yeah? Yeah, so just, Justin Walker's gone, and Ben Warner has gone, and um, Andy Dawson's sticking around, right. um, thankfully, because um, he's obviously amazing. Um, a bit of grit there. Say again? A bit of grit. Yeah, absolutely. And, he, he, and also, let's be fair, he stepped into the breach after Shotter was, was given the bullet, and he did really well. Um, he's, he's all sitting through and through, isn't he? And you need people like that at the football club, and having him around will help a new manager settle in very quickly. Having Dawes, who knows, who knows the club, the, the city, the area, the fans, you know, he is Hall City, so that will be important for a new man, particularly for, if the manager's coming in from the continent, which we expect he will be, uh, from Europe, then that is going to be vitally important to help, helping him settle quickly, because he needs to hit the ground running, because there isn't a lot of time. It's, it, it's a huge appointment. Massive, he, absolutely he, he, massive. he can't afford to get it right. And wrong. It, to, to get it wrong, sorry. Yeah. Uh, slime and soda. What are you doing again, Dick? What's your day job again? Slime and soda. Yeah, it, you can't afford to cock it up, can you? And presumably, will he fund Baz at the same level he's funded this year, by right? putting in 500 grand a week? He's it's got to, that's the commitment that's there. We were talking during the break that, you know, as you again, like it or not, and based on what we've seen so far, the majority of people disagree with his decision. And if you look at social media, which is not always a fair barometer of life, a lot of people disagree with it, and that's fine. Uh, but ultimately, he's put 24 million quid of his own, of his own money in, and will do again to, to fund the club. He, he will realistically probably have to sell either a Jacob or a, a Jade, and I think Jade is probably more likely than Jacob if there was one to go. The reality of being a, a club in the Championship without parachute payments. He will fund, he will back his manager. Um, now, I'm sure he will come out and do interviews in the Turkish press. He will speak to the, the, the British press when he's good and ready, and he will say these things, I'm sure, and he'll put it in his own words. But absolutely, he will back the next person in charge as he back Liam. The key thing for me is to try and get more of it done in, in the summer, because you know Liam spoke openly about having the squad together in, in March and April. Well, that's too late. He said we repeatedly, "I wish I'd have had this squad at the start of the season. It may have been different." But you can't go uh, to January and sign seven players and, and expect them suddenly to hit the ground running and get you over the line into the playoffs. You need to do that work in the summer and give yourself a great chance. Have the Putnam officials said now? They, they have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it came out four o'clock ish, I think, three, four o'clock. Sorry, just one for me, Pat. If you had a tenner in your Sky Bet account, who would you be back in for the next. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, cracky, I've got no idea. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you back his brother? He's, he's not getting out of here alive, is he? It's either it's a bladder problem or you've had an important phone call. Is there anything you want yeah, to do? Yeah, it was, it was, I think he's just chilling out watching the, uh, is it the bird about tonight? No, it's not, that's tomorrow night, isn't it? He's at the PSG Dortmund game. Is he? just sat watching that. I thought they were buying a new football club tonight. Plans change. Oh, right. So, uh, so mysterious. Oh. Just chit-chat. You know, he's a very chatty, chatty guy. 
he was just asking how everybody was. You know? I think he would have liked to, he, would, he wanted to come tonight. I think he wanted, um, he would have liked to have come and, and kind of, and Tan as well. Obviously, Tan was originally scheduled to come and obviously you probably saw the, the tweet we put out yesterday saying that he's, he's not coming. Kind of, I mean, all the ducks were lying. I think they would have liked to have been here to take, I guess, to take a flag and to kind of front up their decisions, but it's not always, I think, from our, this side of the table, it's probably easier than it, it may be in reality. I don't know if that's um, if that's fair, but I'm sure in time he, they'll, they, they will speak and, and hopefully put a bit more meat on the bones. But yeah, he, he sends his, his wishes and um, and hopefully we'll get some news in the next year. What? I don't know. Right now, in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks now. Next month, first of July. It's not the takeover. It's happening tomorrow. Might <laughs> be tomorrow. Next week. Oh, okay. So oh, there you go. Right. We were hoping. <laughs> we, we were hoping to finish on a revelation. All about his little day of mail and on his Twitter feed and uh, online. And, when this yeah. information, when the white smoke, you you, 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 you will know. Um, do join us again on the 1904 Club. We'll be back uh, on our laptops from uh, various parts of our various houses. That sounds like we've got more than one house. We are actually together. Yeah, it's strange. Like the Beatles in the Hell film when they're not two houses together. Um, thank you very much for, for coming. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed it. And our thanks to, our, to, to David Brutton for, for coming from his very expensive home here down in in Harrogate to join us in the city of Bristol. And a man whose name will always be uh, etched in the history of Old City Football Club. He's, he's, he's been brilliant tonight. I've really enjoyed his, his company and his stories. We wish him well with his coaching career. Maybe the next time you'll say, right, I'm going to take it. We, we don't know where you're going to go, but we wish you all the best. David Myler. <laughs> Who, who drives it and pulls it all together. He puts an incredible amount of work into covering Hull City and he deserves uh, great credit for it and our thanks and appreciation. Baz Cooper from the Hull Daily Mail. I can't, we can't leave without thanking you as well, Ben. Come on. Thank you. Uh, those who come to more than many. And on this day, as we wrap up, uh, our, our thoughts with Liam Rossinia. Uh, the, the rights and the wrongs of the, the decision we'll, we'll only know in the future, but we wish him well in, in whatever he's, he, he, he does in the future. Benji, it's been a pleasure to deal with for 18 months. He's, he's, you know, in the media, we rely on, on good people to work with and people that are open, because ultimately we're trying to tell stories for you. You're the fans, you're the people that deserve to know what's going on in your football club uh, and as you're in town. But Liam has been a, a great manager to work with. Um, I've got to I've got to know him really well over the last what, 18 months, as I say, and um, he, he's, I will miss him. He's been a pleasure to work with. Um, we've not always seen eye to eye, but that is, as Bernie said, that's the nature of of being a, a reporter and being a, a club manager. You, you clash, you have disagreements. He will ring, he will ring up, and, and there'll be things that he doesn't agree with, and that is that is that goes with the territory. But he's always been straight. He's always been honest, and um, you know, I, I would, from, from from that point of view, I thank him for. For, for helping us and being really open with us, and I wish you the best luck, to, best luck in the future. As we all know. Say again? Is Janice from Hull? Yes. Let's <laughs> not forget that. Um, and finally, thank you very much to you for, for turning out on this Tuesday night at the new Wall Street Club. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Keep listening to the 1904 Club from the Hull Daily Mail. So, our thanks to you. Done. Yeah, thank you very much for coming.